Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. I am your host Faraz and we are solving questions on recursion. So I have already uploaded two lectures on recursion. If you don't have the basic idea of recursion, you can go and watch those lectures and then continue with this question. Also in this question we will need something called strings. So, so if you have not done strings, you must have done something called an array of characters. So an array of characters is actually called a string. So we were using something like this care AR of size 50 this is a this is an array of characters right so instead of that we can use strings as well if you if you don't know about strings you can go to c++.com and read a bit about strings from here so basically there are very few functions which I'll be using on strings and which are actually required we will know a lot about it when we actually start solving questions on strings basically we can create something like this string string x and we can initialize it with some string like this and then we can print the size x dot size and it will give us the size of the string let me just run this one okay let me just run this it should give me the size of the string x and it is giving 11 and 11 is the size of the string now if I want to add something to this string so I can do this x plus equal to maybe another string so now let us see what's the size so the size will increase by 6 it should be 17 it is 17 see so it is so simple you can add something like this to the string then you can also compare two string using the compare function which you will get to know from here and where's the compare function string dot compare this is the compare function you can also find the substring starting from a specific location there are a lot of functions we will uh, we don't need them in this video but we will need them in future so I will tell you wh when we require them we are going to discuss it so don't you don't have to worry about it you just know what string is it is a col collection of characters so first of all uh, in this question we are given that this number pad okay so these kinds of phones these kind of mobile phones we have used in the past so whenever we want to write a message to someone let us say we want to write hi so uh, where's H we have to press 4 the letter 4 how many times 2 times 4 2 times to get to get the H and we have to press 4 3 times so that we can get I so this is how you print hi in the keypad in the keypad phones that we used to have so now we are given a collection of digits let's say we are given 2 3 now we have to tell all the combinations that we can generate using 2 3 basically if we are given 2 3 so corresponding to 2 there is a b c corresponding to 3 there is d e f now if we press 2 one time we will get a if we press 2 two times we will get b if we press 2 three times we will get c similarly if i uh, press 3 one time i will get d if I press it two times I will get E if I press it three times I will get F now I will have to tell all the combinations so I can get A D or I can get A E or I can get A F I'm pressing two only one time and then three uh, one time here two times here and three times here I will have to press them very quickly right so we just press three 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 and we get F so that's how I have to generate all the possible combinations I hope you understand that so if I press 2 2 times I will get B so in front of B I can add D E and F again okay so these are all the combinations so let me take an example let's take the first example itself which is 2 3 right so what I mean to say is I will find the answer for this part everything after 2 I will just keep 2 to myself and I will find the answer for everything that is after 2 in this case it is only 3 so I will find the answer for 3 so if you are only given 3 we can have 3 possibilities we can either get D or we can get E or we can get F Okay. so we will return these 3 possibilities D, E or F I will return them as a vector of string of course because these are strings individually and uh, there are 3 strings so I will return them as a vector as a collection of strings okay so now I have D comma E comma F now this is the vector that I am returning from this part now as I told you I was keeping two to myself so I will be adding whatever characters are there corresponding to two in front of all these characters so 
corresponding to I have A, B and C. So I will add A in front of these. So I will have AD, AE and AF. Then the second character I have is B. So I will add BD, BE and BF. The third character that I have is C. So CD, CE and CF. And finally I will return this. So similarly if I have uh, three numbers, two, three and six, then I will find the answer for this part. And I will append A, B and C in a similar way in front of all these uh, in front of answers for this part now if I want to find the answer for 3 6 I will do a similar thing I will keep 3 to myself and I will find answer corresponding to 6 so corresponding to 6 I have M N O. so I will return M N O okay now in front of M N O, I I will add whatever is then uh, corresponding to 3 that is D E F D E F so D M D N do this is n then em en eo fm fn fo now this part this thing will be returned and i will add abc in front of all these things so that is how we can do this so this is a recursion right this is how we get the hint of recursion so if i want to find the answer for let's say uh, six nine eight seven six four three two I will find the answer for this one using recursion I will get a vector of string now in that vector of string whatever strings are there I will add the characters corresponding to six in front of all those characters so uh, once I start coding it it will be much more clear so first of all let me map the integers with the corresponding characters so I will create a map of int and a string corresponding to m of 1 I am going to add ABC corresponding to m of 2 I will add DEF then m of 3 is equal to GHI m of 4 is equal to JKL m of 5 is equal to MNO no m of 5 is actually jkl so this is uh, m of 2 not 1 this is m of 3 this is m of 4 this is m of 5 and this is m of 6 and then 7 corresponding to 7 I have pqrs so pqrs and then corresponding to 8 I have tuv corresponding to 9 I have W X Y and Z okay I'm done with the map now now I will have to use recursion to find the answer so recursion I am creating the function here this is going to return me a vector of string and I will call this the name of this function I will write it as REC okay now in this I am passing the string D which is given to me and I'll pass an index i. Why this index i? So basically I want to keep one number to myself, right? So this i is to denote from where am I starting. So in the first case, in the first, uh, when I'm passing this entire thing, I'll be starting from this position, of course. Okay, when the next recursive call is made, I will pass this thing. So instead of just um, cutting it from here and then passing, I can simply pass the same string. I'll just make i point to this position, okay? So when I want to find the answer for this part which is um, encircled in the brown color I can also split it as 9 and 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2 this. So this I will append and this I will find using recursion. Again this thing will be called using recursion and instead of just creating another string starting from 8 I can just make the i point to this place and then pass it. So that's why I'm using i and I won't have to create so many copies of this string d. Also, if I'm not creating any copies of the string D, I can pass it as a reference. Otherwise, um, in each recursive call, a new copy will be made. So what actually happens is, like, uh, this is the recursive function, and I'm passing a string here, right? It is uh, The string is going to take some extra space. This, this is the extra space that that string D is taking. Now, if this recursive function is going to call another function recursively, I mean, to itself recursively, again, this copy of str or string will be made. 
if I don't pass it as a reference. Similarly, if I have vector, then again a copy of vector will be made. So if I have another recursive call, this function is calling itself recursively again, then this again, some extra copy will be made. This copying, it takes big O of n times if there are n elements in case of string as well as in case of vector. So which is quite expensive in terms of time and in terms of space as well. It is taking extra space, it is taking extra time and let us say if we have thousands and thousands of recursive call, these thousand times extra space and thousand times extra time will be used. In most of the cases it also gives us TLE. Okay, So in this question as we saw that we can reuse the same string we just have to make i point to the next character. We just have to increment i. We can use the same string. That is why we are just passing it as a reference and I will use i to point to the location from where I have to start. Okay. Initially, i will be 0. And at the end of the recursion, this i will be d dot size. So this is the base case. If i is equal to d dot size, it means we are at the end and we don't have any characters left. So in that case, I will just simply return an empty vector. So this is how we return an empty vector. Now, when i is in somewhere middle or maybe i is in the front. So in that case, what I have to do is I will have to call the function rec recursively and I have to store the answer correspond which this function is going to return. So I will store this answer into a vector of string because it is going to return me a vector of string. This is my temp. Okay. This is the temp and this is going to store the answer. I have to pass the same d and I will pass i plus 1. Now I have the answer corresponding to this part. So let us say if I have this number 98765. So I have the answer corresponding to this part. The, f the recursive function is going to return me the answer. You don't have to think how it is going to return. You just have to find it using recursion. Consider it a magical function and just find the answer for this part and consider that you have the answer for this part into this temporary vector temp. Now once you have the answer for this part, what do you have to do? You have to append all the characters corresponding to 9. So what is there corresponding to 9? W, X, Y, Z. W, X, Y, Z. So append each of these characters one by one in front of the answers to this part, which the function is going to return me. So I have the answer for this part, which the function is going to return me in temp. And now I will add each of the characters corresponding to the current digit. So how am I going to find each of the characters corresponding to the current digit? that will be that I can find using this map. So I have to uh, get this map here as well into this recursion function. So map of int comma string as a reference again and um, I don't want to make copies. So I can use this map here map of d of i. Okay. Also d of i is a character and I want to convert it into an integer. So just remove this part. 0. So it is going to give me the exact character in integer form. Okay. So now I want to find all the characters corresponding to this integer that I can do using a for loop for auto a belongs to this part. So it is going to give me each of these characters one by one. So I will be getting if I had 9 I will be getting wx wxyz. So I have to append this number in front of all the answers that are stored in this temp. So I have to go to all of, the, all of these answers as well. So for auto x belong to temp. Okay, I'm going to each of these strings and in front of each of these strings I'm going to append the character A. So I'm going to go to each of these strings inside the temporary answer that we got and mm, I'll have to create an answer to return as well. So vector of int answer this is something that I will be returning so here here I will add answer dot pushback a plus x okay so this is what I have to push back and then I can return this answer and let us give it a try now so we'll return the name of the function is rec and I am going to pass d here, 0 here and the map also in the recursion here I have to pass the map m. Let us just give it a try. Oops. String st string string
pushback answer dot okay it should be a it should be a vector of string Ooh. hmm why is it giving me um, this empty vector because at the end when I'm returning here it is always when I reach till the end I'm returning an empty vector so if I return an empty vector this loop is never going to work and hence I will vo I won't be able to generate anything so I have to return this I won't have to return an empty vector I will have to return a vector with an empty string let me now run it again and we are getting correct answer so I'm going to submit this now and let us see if I get this accepted okay um, okay so when the given string is uh, of size 0 in that case I don't have to return this so uh, this is the base condition here if d dot size is equal to 0 then return this uh, sorry return this an empty vector and it got accepted okay this was a simple basic recursive solution in the recursive solution what we were doing we were just trying to find out the answer for this particular part using recursion and then whatever answers we get we are trying to append everything corresponding to 9 every character corresponding to 9 in front of all these answers this is simple okay I hope you understand this if you understand this make sure to hit the like button and make sure to leave your comments also if you want to if you want to watch more such lectures if you want to follow the playlist make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get the notifications for the latest videos